Good morning. It's good to be in front of you to share uh, the Word of God. We are, as Carl has mentioned on this series, a vision. A vision of what we have for this family that we worship together, that uh, praise the Lord together. So we continue this series where we want to envision together as a congregation what the Church of Christ at Pastor Panjang will be in the years to come. Knowing who the God we serve is, what manner of people then do we ought to be. Because the character of God we have went through in the earlier series sets the tone for us. Our God who is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. This we have learned. We now are to be then God's image. We are to be God's image so that others may see Christ in us. And if we do that faithfully, we will be a channel through which God's blessing will flow. I have chosen to talk about one of the characteristic of the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. Peace is one of that. And not just any peace, the peace of God. Maybe I start by telling you my name. <laughs> Lim Sui An. My parents gave me that name. The last Chinese word is An. It means peace. I think that is their hope for me, that I live a life of peace. And thank God, uh, God has indeed blessed me with a life of peace. Much of what I have now is a blessing from God. And the fact that I serve now is out of gratitude for all that God has given me. And uh, the verse that I want to share also, this one from John chapter 14, verse 27. This is what Jesus told the apostle, um, the 12 disciples, after they had the upper room experience where Jesus washed the disciples' feet, had the last supper. This was like one of the last instructions that Jesus gave his 12 disciples to anticipate the coming days where he will be crucified, where he will be buried, and he will be raised at the third day. And in the beginning of chapter 14, he talks about, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And then in 14 verse 6, he talks about, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. In the end of chapter 14, this is the one he says, Peace I leave with you, my peace. I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. So do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Three things I wanted to cover here just from this word. It is about my peace. The peace that Jesus Christ is able to give. The second thing is that the converse of peace is trouble. Being afraid this we experience. We live in this life, we live in this world, we will encounter this. Then the peace of Christ is the antidote. Then there's an action word there, the third thing. Do not let your hearts be troubled. It is something we can do. We will face trouble, we will encounter fear, yet there's something you can do. Do not let your heart be troubled. The thing about trouble is that when we encounter situation, there will be stress, there will be things beyond our control. And then our mind will wonder things about worry, things that we worry about because we cannot control it. Some of us as parents, we, we know that as a young parent, when uh, my kids especially girls, go out and, oh, they're supposed to be back at 10, and then at 12 o'clock, there's no news. So you think of all kinds of things, right? You have no control. So that is the worry, that's the trouble, that's being afraid. 
And so the, the mind goes and it imagines all kinds of things that uh, troubles you. Then comes the word from God that helps you to be settled. Second uh, Corinthians ten five capture every thought and to make it obedient to Christ. The sense of capture is like maybe a young child straying, going somewhere. Capture it to your obedience. The thought is something like that. It wanders, it goes. Can you capture it? Capture it to the obedience of Christ. That is what we mean by don't let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. There is something you can do. And if you for me, I um, use the Word of God. If you remember the Word of God, and it's something I do with meditation, more like memory, memorization. And something that we will learn about in the coming next week, we talk about spiritual formation, spiritual discipline, meditation and memorization of God's Word. You store the Word of God in your heart. You treasure it. And when your hearts are troubled, you use the word of God and you capture that thought. And don't let it go astray. The thing about another example, I will give you three examples. There was one about capturing thought. The second verse that comes to mind is at work. We all who have been working do encounter stresses at work. There will be demands and questions. I want to get this done by tomorrow. Or something needs to be delivered tomorrow. I'm in an organization that is doing sales. Of, sometimes we get into these big deals. And the bosses will say, this is a must-win deal. And I'm supposed to do the demonstration, right? And so they will tell you this kind of thing. And so it adds pressure to you. And the things that keep me sane is, is this other verse that I have. We know the first one, right? Matthew 6, 33. Six verse is kingdom and is righteousness. And all these things will be given to you. The word that helps me is the next verse. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And so I use that and I shut it down. Okay, tomorrow will worry about itself. I'll do what I can today. And that helps because I worry about tomorrow to be too much for me. I can't sleep and then tomorrow I won't do well, right? So I will have a restful sleep. Thank God I'm usually able to get my eight hours sleep. And then another one that many of you know, this is the third example I have, is the favorite verse of many of us. I think you have experienced it. When you have experienced it, it means so much more to you. And uh, I want to share an account of a colleague of mine. At the age of early 30s, okay, um, comfortable career, married, and he started having pain in his fingers, his toes, sometimes blur vision, um, cannot feel the arm sometimes, lots of sensation, memory lapse. These symptoms are comes and goes. So you go to see a doctor. The psychology is, I have a trouble, I go see a doctor, I'm encouraged, right? Somebody will help me. But his situation is quite difficult. The doctor couldn't find out what happens. And when he comes, he goes to see the doctor. And again, he's disappointed because he didn't go away, he comes back again. So after some time, they decided to refer him to the hospital. They warded him and done all kinds of tests in the neuro ward. They believe it's something to do with the nerves and the brain. So they warded him, spending some time. They test, they found nothing. They couldn't find to identify what is causing this problem. Then they um, decided maybe it's to do with the blood. Hemat the hematology ward Hematology is the study of blood and blood diseases. And then they found something interesting. We all have platelets. Platelets are the things in the blood that help the blood clot when you have a cut. But for him, he has 
three times the number of platelets than normal normally people have. So that's dangerous, right? It clots, then it will block your arteries and all. And so the one of the causes is leukemia, but they needed to do a test. So they took example, they did a test, they said, okay, your result will come back in three weeks. But he's warded in the hospital for three weeks while waiting for the result. And you can imagine he has gone through this for a few months, right? Going to the GP, hoping to be cured, going to the neuro. He couldn't get it cleared. And now they say, oh, it will potentially be leukemia and we'll wait three weeks and we'll tell you. So that, that's the difficult situation to be in. And he got this intense worry that he has never experienced before. I mean, friends will come, he's a Christian. Friends will come, read him the Bible. He will pray, uh, do positive thinking, there will be jokes. And yet, the worry did not go away. It will always come back. This is like the stray thought I mentioned, right? You need to capture it. He tried to capture it, but he couldn't. It still went wonders. So, one night he prayed. He told God, this kind of worry is killing me. I can't wait three weeks to know. So he prayed for the peace of God. He prayed this prayer. That the peace of God will guard his heart and mind. And to the, the peace that transcends all understanding. Because by normal understanding, he's in a very difficult situation. And that night, it didn't go away. He did sleep fitfully. Next morning, he read the verse from Luke 12.25. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? This verse also is known to him. But at that moment, he experienced a peace that transcends all understanding. If you can measure worry at 100, it suddenly went down to zero. And it didn't come back for the three weeks. And so there's two parts to it, right? Peace that transcends peace that surpassed all understanding. He himself couldn't understand it. He was in intense worrying for the past week. And yet now, he doesn't worry anymore. How can it be? Christ Jesus has got his heart and mind. This is something you have to experience. I'm telling you because hopefully we don't have to experience it ourselves. But know that the power of God is there. The peace of God that transcends all understanding. is available if you would call out to him, if you would pray to him, so this is the thing that I hope will encourage you. The three verses about capturing a thought. Secondly, about um, don't worry about tomorrow. And thirdly, of this. So with that, I want to then um, show you this. Uh, this part also had the three things that I talk about. Firstly, it is the peace of God. Secondly, the opposite of peace is anxiety. And thirdly, you can see there is something you can do about it by prayer and petition. And so, it is my vision, my hope, and among our elders, you have heard Simon mention it last Sunday prayer warrior group. Together we pray. Th this is how we overcome. We ask, we call upon the power of God. And I, it is my hope that as a community, we support one another because we will go through ups and downs at different times. We may be well for this season, something else may come. And when that happens, would you share it with your brother and sister that we can pray with you, you don't have to carry it alone. In fact, that's the lie of Satan, right? He is the deceiver. He deceives you to say, you are alone. You have, people won't understand. People will laugh at you. Or people will think you are less because that is a failure. That's a lie because I tell you, I also have my own failures. I have been detrenched. I have gone for interviews that I didn't get. Um, mistakes that sometimes my and I was driving, I would shake my head like this. And then my daughter would think, ah, my father has remembered a boo-boo that he made. <laughs> so these are things we all have gone through it. So you share with 
if you're not comfortable to share with others because you think they may uh, betray your confidence, come to the elders. You talk to us. We have gone through ups and downs, more downs than up. We will understand. We will pray for you. And we'll pray together. Don't do it alone. Uh, it is not. It is a lie of Satan that you carry it into the darkness. So maybe I conclude with the three things about peace of God. Firstly, if ever you confide in someone and the person made you feel lousy or belittle it, or be insensitive to your suffering, let us do something about such people. Come tell me, we will admonish them with the wisdom of God. You cannot do this, you know. We are brothers and sisters, firstly. Yeah? I mean, we should develop that culture to support one another in this community. There is this verse in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 3. God and Father of our Lord Jesus is the Father of compassion, God of all comfort. He comforts us in all our trouble so that we ourselves may comfort others with any trouble with the in any trouble with the comfort we receive from Christ Jesus. Uh, and then as uh, the opportunity here, I want to thank my fellow elders because I don't carry this alone. The, together, once a week, we come together, we pray for one another, and we pray for you. And it is good that this congregation is able to raise up men and women who support one another, men who are willing to be counted as elders and deacons to do the ministry, the work of ministry that the Lord has given to us. The second thing um, was about most of us have encountered some form of trouble so that don't fear or that people will not understand you or will laugh at your difficulty. My mother tells me, never laugh at somebody's misfortune or the same thing will befall you. Then you will understand why you shouldn't laugh. So that has kept me on my toes. So that is the thing also to, to, to be aware about. Most of us have gone through some form of it. If not, we will. I want to encourage everyone to be sensitive about such sharing, to support one another. And the third thing is about the Lord's promise. I will be with you always to the very end of the age. This is the, the hope that we have. We are not alone. Even you are physically alone, the Lord God is with you. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. And this is the hope we have in Christ Jesus. What is the worst thing that can possibly happen, I can think of is, if we die, if I die. But then that's actually a good thing. Then I go to heaven. Apostle Paul says, for to me, to live is Christ, to die is gain. And so, if you think through this, to have the Lord with you, there is nothing to fear. And so, I pray that through this short sharing, you may be encouraged to seek the peace of God. With that, uh, we can sing the invitation song, and let's uh, stand up and... Sing together. Prince of peace.